recording? Recording has started. Okay, everyone, this is Mrs. Pooney. She's going to be taking over today. We're going to be learning about more about Olympic week, and she's going to teach us about some different flags. Everybody give a warm welcome to Mrs. Pooney. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Heather. Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Thursday. I hope you're having a wonderful morning that you're excited to get started today. Can you see my screen now? Just give me a, a smiley face or give me a thumbs up on your camera. You see my, my screen? Okay, good. Yeah. All right, awesome. So we are gonna pick up where we left off yesterday. Yesterday, we learned about the history of the Olympics. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit, see what we remember. And then we're gonna talk about what the Olympics look like today. So first of all, the materials we will need for today are paint and rocks. We're gonna be making some flag rocks. But I have to tell you, I could not find a rock, so I'm gonna be using seashells, if that's okay. I was at the beach last week. So if you have seashells or rocks, or even if you just have paper, you can do it that way also, okay? And just some different color paint to make some flag rocks of your choice. But we will do that after our lesson today. So first of all, let's talk about the Olympics today. Today, the Olympics are held every two years with summer and winter Olympic games alternating. All sorts of games take place, wrestling, running, and boxing, just as in ancient times, as well as gymnastics, soccer, basketball, and much more. Back in the days of the first Olympics, only men were allowed to enter the games. Today, women can compete as well. So before we move forward, what do we already know about the Olympics? What do we remember from yesterday? Anything, any games that we learned about? Where did they begin? When did they begin? Discus was part of the, um, the five event, the pentathlon, I think. Swimming. Swimming. Bobsled. Bobsled, a great one. Triathlon. Gymnast. Yes. It began in 776 BCE. Very good. Over 3,000 years ago. Where did they begin? I think someone said it. I think I missed it. In ancient Greece. There we go. Thank you. Awesome. You guys did a great job remembering all these facts. And what did the winner win? What was their prize? We made it at the end of class yesterday. What did they win? Do you remember? A crown made of what? Very good. An olive branch crown. And what did the olive branch symbolize to them? Why was it important? What did it symbolize? Money and they would, food. Their cities would honor them that way. And the olive tree represented peace and victory. Excellent job. Awesome work, boys and girls. So, Olympics today. Cities all over the world take turns holding the games. The athletes come from all over the world too, not just from Greece. But the games are still called the Olympics in honor of those first Greek contests. And they still celebrate strength, courage, and hard work, just as they did in the times of ancient Greece. The Olympics are an international sporting event that take place once every four years. Over 200 nations take part. Thousands of top athletes travel to, to a host country to compete in their chosen sport. So the Olympics, we, the Summer Olympics go every four years and the Winter Olympics go every four years, but we still get to watch them every two years, depending if it's summer or winter. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more today. So first of all, let's watch a video now on the history of the Olympics. I'm going to change my screen sharing here. My microphone's going to go out once I play it, but just give me a smiley face in the chat box if the audio is working so I know. Awesome. So take a minute, boys and girls. Tell me something in the chat box that stood out to you. Maybe something you liked about the video, something you learned. Anything new in the video that you found pretty cool? 
Any any responses you guys can just type in chat. The rings are cool. Yeah, I didn't know all rings the information really cool. about the rings. The colors the of the flags. The guy was fun to watch too. Women could not play in the Olympics. I know. I like the flags too. I didn't realize that all the rings represented the flag colors. The symbols, yes. The different colors. I know that I learned so much. Also, no biting. That was funny. I chuckled that a little bit at that. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. All right, boys and girls. So before we go to our next video, we're going to just discuss some of the Olympic challenges. We mentioned them before in the beginning of class. Can you see my screen here? Yep. So what are some of the Olympic challenges that you're familiar with? When you watch the Olympics, whether summer, winter, if you do watch them, what sports do you like to watch? Or do you play any sports maybe that are in the Olympics? Swimming. Mm -hmm. Swimming is one of my favorites. Tennis. Gymnastics. Ice skating. Soccer. I think someone said the bobsled before, which is a lot of fun. I like to watch that as well. Bowling. Running and track. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So if you look here at my screen, what are some of the Olympic challenges? We have basketball, skiing, archery, which is very cool. Gymnastics, swimming, badminton, baseball, boxing, football, skating, golf, cycling, curling, which is a winter sport, diving, equestrian, fencing, hockey, karate, tennis, and many more. So now we're going to watch a video on the different challenges that we see in the sports. Whoops, let me bring up my screen here. We see in the Olympics. Hold on one second. Is anybody in any sports where they're going to try out for the Olympics? Do we have any ice skaters? Somebody said skiing. Skiing's in the Olympics. Skiing is always very cool. What sports do you guys play that maybe you could try out for the Olympics one day? Snowboard, gymnastics, soccer, badminton. Tennis is a good one. You did bowling before? Great. Basketball. Wow. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to bring up my screen again. We have a two part video here. So the first part is the greatest moments in Olympic history. This is a quick video. And then we have another one where um, a kid is going to kind of explain the history of the Olympics a little bit further. Every four years, they take our breath away. Featuring the world's greatest athletes. Competing for the country and chance for glory. They inspire us, challenge us, and thrill us. It's the Olympics. But how did the Olympics first begin? And what are some memorable moments? In this series, we're gonna give you a crash course in the greatest modern sport event of all time, the Olympics. Even though we haven't won a gold medal yet, we can still teach you about some of the best Olympic moments. Welcome to Kid Explorers Olympics course. Courses made for kids by kids. Games have become the world's preeminent sporting competition.
occurring every four years. These games feature the world's greatest athletes competing in a variety of sports for the chance to win a medal and bring their country pride. Although the modern Olympics began in 1896, the origins of games started a long time ago. The Olympic Games originated in ancient Greece as many as 3,000 years ago. The games were held every four years in Olympia in honor of the Greek god Zeus. First written records of ancient Olympic games dated to 776 BC when a cook called Corbus The race is on! won the only event, a 192 meter foot race, to become the first Olympic champion. Yeah. Legend has it that Hercules, the Roman Hercules, son of Zeus, and the mortal woman Alcline found in the games, which by the end of the 6th century BC had become the most famous of all the Greek sports festivals. Competitions known as dialogues, kind of like today's 400 meter race, and dialogues, a longer distance race, boxing, and chariot racing, and the pantathlon, consisting of five events, a foot race, a long jump, discus and javelin throws, and a wrestling match. Participation in the ancient Olympic Games was initially limited to free-born male citizens of Greece. There were no female events, and married women were not allowed to attend the competition. Also in ancient Greece, athletes competed naked. Huh? You're kidding, right? Anyways, after the Roman Empire conquered Greece in the mid second century BC, the games continued, but their standards and quality declined. Then in AD 393, Emperor Theodosius called to ban all pagan festivals, ending the Olympic tradition after nearly 12 centuries. It'd be another 1500 years before the games would rise again. Thanks to the efforts of Pierre de Coubertin of France, dedicated to the promotion of physical activity, the young baron became inspired by the idea of creating a modern Olympic Games after visiting an ancient Olympic site. In 1892, Coubertin had an idea of reviving the Olympics as an international athletic competition held every four years. Two years later, he got the approval he needed to start the International Olympic Committee, which is in charge of the modern Olympic Games. Today, the Olympics is one of the most important sporting events in the world. In the next video, we're going to dive deep into the Summer Olympics. Awesome. So anything new that you learned, boys and girls, anything that stuck out to you or that you're interested to learn more about? What is this that they use to be in the Olympics without clothes? That is very interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I was <laughs> not here yesterday. Free. I, did not. I did not know that. Oh, my goodness. So That's that must silly. have been a long, 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 long time ago. Yeah. Yeah over 3,000 years ago. Now some of them different. have some pretty cool outfits like the ice skaters and the gymnasts and everybody has such cool uniforms. What did you... And they what usually is, match their flag, right? Their uniforms will right. match their country, so... Which matches the rings. See how it all comes together, campers? Yep. <laughs> Very cool. What did, what did anybody else learn in that video? It doesn't sound safe. I... <laughs> It sounds like you, you should have something to cover you up, right? For sure. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to keep reading a little bit more about the Olympics today. So the 2024 Olympics, which will be next summer, are going to be held in Paris. They will start on Friday, July 26, 2024. 
and they will continue through Sunday, August 11th, 2024. So that's something to look forward to next summer if you want to watch the Olympics. And it says, ever since Schuess, a red, white, and blue mascot on skis, appeared at the Olympic Winter Games Grenoble 1968, mascots have been fun and festive ambassadors of the Olympic movement. Now it's time to meet Phrygius, the mascots for the Paris 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Games, who have been tasked with an important mission to show the world that sport can change everything and that it deserves to play a major role in society. So this is what the mascot's going to look like right here. Phrygius is their name. We choose an ideal rather than an animal. As Stanguet said, when the mascots were revealed, we choose a Phrygian cap because it's a very strong symbol for the French Republic. For French people, it's a very well-known object that is a symbol of freedom, an object that will represent mascots all across the world. The fact that the Paralympics mascot has a visible disability also sends a strong message to promote inclusion. I'm going to show you a quick little video on our mascots over here. But think about if the Olympics were held in your city or in your country, especially close to you, what would you think of that? I'm sure Paris is very excited for a city to hold the Olympics. It's a really big deal that people get really, really excited. They want to show their support for their country and for their team. Right, so what would you think if you actually had the Olympics in your city? It'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Would you want to go? All right, I'm going to share my screen one more time. Bring up the video here. Whoops. Okay. So there we go. There's my mic. So keep an eye out for that mascot next year for the Summer Olympics. And I think skateboarding is in the Olympics now. I think in the Summer Olympics, we will see some skateboarding. So if you like that, it's a nice addition to the Summer Olympics. So many awesome sports in the Olympics. So many. Ones you don't even think about. Exactly. So any sports you like, anything that you want to watch, I'm sure you can find it in the Olympics. I hope you get to watch them next year. So a quick check before we go on to um, one more video and our craft. Where did the Olympic Games begin? Tell me in the chat box. Where did they begin? Greece? Greece, very good. What were some of the games? Whether that you remember from the beginning, from way back when, or now. Remind me of some of the games that we see. Discus, yes. Swimming, racing, Wrestling. running. Wow, you guys are quick. Long jump. It's a good one. And finally, where will the Summer Olympics be held next year? Where will they be held Paris. Next year? Awesome. We're going to have to get a big plane and we can all go to Paris. What do you think? <laughs> I would love to see the Olympics. I would love to be there for that. That would be awesome. All right, our last video before our craft boys and girls are what countries have participated and the medals that they've won. So I'm gonna share this video. We're gonna get an idea of what countries have the most medals in the Olympics.
All right, did you know that, boys and girls? Did you know how many medals some of those countries had? It's pretty amazing. You see it in perspective like that. Very cool. We do. We have worked very hard. And we'll see next summer too. Who's going to win some of these games? So many countries. Wow. The coolest thing about the Olympics that I think is how it brings a whole world together over sports and that we get to compete with all different countries. You get to see the greatest athletes, how hard they work, and really the whole world can celebrate it. So I think that's one of the most special things about the Olympics. Yes, it definitely brings everybody together. And anybody can join the Olympics, so. And if you play a sport, maybe we'll see you in the Olympics one day. I can remember when you learned about it during summer camp. Um, boys and girls, we're going to go into our flag rocks now. All right. So whatever materials you have, um, take a minute to get them ready. You'll need some paint, some rocks if you have them. I told you in the beginning of class that I'm going to be using seashells. If you don't have rocks or seashells, if you have something else that you can paint with, that's certainly okay too. And we're going to be making some different flag rocks to celebrate the Olympics and an Olympic rock as well. So I'm going to flip my camera for you so you can see my materials. I can't wait to see all of your creations. We've gotten some pictures from some campers of different crafts that they've done over the past few weeks. And you guys are very talented. Their crafts yesterday with the um, olive branch crown was very cool as well. I have to watch the video. I mean, it sounds amazing. Maybe I'll make one too from the video. So boys and girls, when you are ready, I guess just give me a thumbs up on your camera. Miss Heather, if you can let me know if you think that they're ready to get started or if they still need let to grab some materials. See. We have some people, let's just give it another moment. And it's okay sure. if you don't have rocks, you can use a piece of paper. Of you can, anything you have around the house, you can use. And if, if you don't want to paint and you want a color on a piece of paper instead, that's fine. So I'm going to kind of put a mat down for my paint and I'm going to use this and just start getting my paint set up. The first rock or seashell that I'm going to make is going to be this middle one with the rings in it, the blue, black, red, yellow, and green ring. I'm going to start with that one. You can start with that one as well, or you could choose a flag that you want to make on your rock. So let me get my paints ready here. Everybody's setting up. Oh, I see people shaking their paint. I see some paint brushes. I'm also excited to see all the different objects you guys are going to paint since not everybody has rocks. I really like the seashell. That was a great idea. I have so many. We love collecting them when we go to the shore. So I thought this would be a good way to kind of bring the beach back. Yeah. And then if you guys don't go to the beach, go to the lake. You can find some rocks, you know, so many different things in nature that you can paint. I'm just getting my paint set up here. All the colors I'll need for the first one. Campers, the ball in the bags are for when Mr. Stonebreaker comes on around 11. He's going to be doing a separate activity with sports. Um, so you can put those things to the side for now, and then we will use those in just a little bit. For now, you're just going to need your rock or whatever object you're painting or coloring just to make your flag rocks. All right, should I give everyone another minute, do you think? I think we're ready. Okay. Looks like All a right. bunch of campers are ready to go. Awesome, boys and girls. Actually, I forgot my glass of water. To, well, I have my different paintbrushes here, so I can do it this way. All right, so I'm just going to start by making our Olympic symbol on the seashell. And it looks like we have the blue circle first. 
can you guys see, so we're, we're leaving up the flag rocks photo so you guys can mimic any of those but then you can also watch mrs cooney on her screen here up at the top to see her painting Oof. looking good i see a lot of campers hard at work And it looks like they overlap just a little bit. I think I might need to get some of my thinner paint brushes, but we're gonna keep working with this. Hopefully be able to make them the same size here. What do we think we can do with our rocks and our seashells when we're finished with them? I love to put painted rocks in my garden. My daughter, I painted an owl at school this past year, or you can give oh, them such a good idea. Yeah. Or give them to a grandparent and let them put them in their garden. If you have like artificial trees or plants in your house, you can like put them in the pots on top. Or you could just, you know, leave them around somewhere. My first three rings, I need to add my yellow and green. Feel free to show us any, all the campers, if you wanna show us your progress, you can always hold up your item and just show off what you have so far. And don't I feel like you need to, to see do them. the rings. You can do any of the designs that you want. Exactly. You may start with any flag, Maybe you want to do the American flag if you celebrated the 4th of July the other day. Ooh, kind of there go along you go. With that. Oh, Elise, that looks great. And Elise is just using paper and it's, it looks amazing. Great job. You know what? Paper was smart because you have a big, large canvas to work with. That's so true. Little wow. tricky on a seashell, but I think we're making it work. I love it, Elise. You did great work. Good job, Elise. Let's see. Anybody else want to hold up what they're doing? You don't have to hold it up yet. I know a lot of you are still working very hard. Oh, yes. Layla, I like that. That is awesome. That's a big rock. Oh, my goodness. Let's see anybody else i'm just scrolling through all of the photos so if i haven't gotten to you yet that's why taylor oh taylor great job taylor also used a big piece of paper and it looks great kenny's working on building country flags in minecraft that's oh, cool. Very cool. That's a cool alternative. That is a great idea. That was creative of you, Kenny. Good job. Hey, Nate, I like that. Let's keep on scrolling here. Jake, John, that looks great, buddy. Something about painting is just so soothing. It really is. Just like coloring. Hey, Spencer, let me see yours. What are you working on? Oh, let's see in the chat. Oh, good job, buddy. Spencer looks great. Gideon, you're off. Oh, wait a second. Are those pipe cleaners that you put together? That is so creative. You campers amaze me. Let's keep scrolling here. Oh, yes, Elise, keep going. You're doing great. And then anybody that doesn't have supplies or didn't want to do this activity, you can always come back and do it later when you do have supplies. Maybe you'll have a cousin or a friend or a sibling help you at a later time. This is a great rainy day activity as well. It sure is.
So we have rocks, we have seashells, I've seen paper, any other items that we're using to paint. Minecraft, obviously, we're using, not to paint, but what an awesome twist. Yeah, be creative, boys and girls, whatever works for you. You don't all have to look the same. I'm going to do the American flag for my second one here. If I can make this work. You're making a bracelet, Aubrey? That's a great idea. Very creative. Ooh, that, that's a pretty looking seashell you have there, Mrs. Cooney. Oh, you thank you great so job. much. Great job. I don't know if I could get my lines so straight <laughs> when I do mine. I feel like I can barely draw a straight line with a ruler. I've had a lot of practice. My daughters love painting seashells. So this is one of our favorite summer activities after we go to the beach. Oh, I've never done a flag seashell, though, or an Olympic seashell. No, you can't. I'm gonna, you haven't. I'm going to wait till the blue dries to add my white stars. So I think I'm going to let that sit for a little bit before I add some stars to that. But keep holding up what you're Nilla, making. If you put so yours like, like right it. in front of your shirt, like right here, we might be able to see it just because you have your background blurred, which is fine. But if you want to just hold it like right here, and if not, you don't have to. Oh, what? Are you using a round piece of cardboard? That is so smart. See, you can use anything. Good job. Excellent. Yeah, if you have any boxes or anything. I didn't even think about if you got a whole bunch of round pieces of cardboard, you could make rings that way too. Yeah, the stars might be a little difficult to paint because you have to let the paint dry first, right? Before you go in and do the stars. So maybe we can add stars in a little bit, but you wanna let it completely dry before you paint over paint because then the colors will just mix and it will look a little messy. Unless you have tips and tricks on how to paint over wet paint. And then I'm open to hear those. Oh. William and Isaac, you guys are just so smart all the time. You could use star stickers oh, that you could. Oh, very good. Excellent. I didn't even think about that. I might have some too. Adding some stickers for the stars. It would cool. It would be cool to make like shirts in preparation for the Olympics in a year. It's a great idea too. You can make, you know many different designs. You could make the flag, you could do the rings, so many things. Oh, Elise, you just keep adding more and more. You're doing so great. Does anybody else want to hold up what they're doing? Did anybody finish already? Three pieces of paper, Elise. You are just such a great artist. Spencer, it looks good. Oh, see, Spencer proved me wrong. He put his stars on there and it looks great. Taylor's looks good. Gigi, yours looks... Gigi did a great job too putting her stars on. Declan, you're going to do the three medals. That's awesome. I'm still scrolling through. Let's see. I think I have everybody. William, that's a great idea. I was thinking about all of the American flags that everyone is making. You could pull it out for Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, the Olympics. So many different ways to use your rocks. All right, boys and girls, we have a few more minutes before um, we will start wrapping up just for our break. Um, if you want to stick around and keep painting, you are welcome to do so. And Miss Heather, if it's okay, I actually have an Olympic brain break for them. So kind of like yes, um, an amazing. activity to play. 
I'll start that at uh, 1050 if that's okay. You know what? That is perfect because I don't think they want to see me stretch. Last time I had to stretch, I didn't do the fun sounds like Mr. Sheik does. And I think I let everybody down. So I think that's perfect. <laughs> Which flag outside of the United States, of course, which flag do we like the best? Which one do we think is the prettiest, has the most color, has the coolest design? I don't know which one. I like Italy. I like Sweden. I like the blue and yellow. Yes, I do. I do like the blue. Cool it is beautiful. Honduras, because that's where your dad's from. That's awesome. Yes. Brazil. That is so cool that your dad is from Honduras. Germany or Britain, they're definitely yep. cool, especially Britain. It's amazing how many different flags there are considering there are so many countries and they're all just so different. I mean, some look kind of similar, but for the most part, oh my goodness, so many designs. Hong Kong's flag is cool. The yellow and blue flag does look like a birthday present. You're right. And the one over here that it's green and then it has like a yellow triangle and then um, blue circle. It almost looks like an eye to me. That's Brazil. Yeah, Kenny, come on. Come on, Miss Heather, get it together. That is a very cool flag. I love it. Boys and girls, you did an excellent job today. Awesome work. I'm going to let my seashells dry. Come back to them a little bit later. If it's okay, Miss Heather, I'll start the brain break for them. It's about seven minutes long. Absolutely. Feel right, free, so campers. Is... I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Feel free to hang out if you have to run to the restroom, grab a snack. Um, if you can try not to leave the room, if you do, I will obviously admit you back in. But if you want to stick around, we're going to do the brain break. Awesome. This is a Summer Olympics this or that workout. So let's see some Summer Olympic games that are in this brain break for us.